Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Breaking news, I'm tracking some delays in Garner because of a vehicle fire out on I-40. I'll show you which alternate routes you'll want to take. And tomorrow, excuse me, Saturday is a WRL weather alert day. We'll talk about the timing of some strong to severe thunderstorms that may roll through. And North Carolina will be on the national stage tonight for the State of the Union address. Coming up, who's being honored from our area? And one person is hurt after leading authorities in Moore County on an early morning chase. What deputies say happened just before that car crashed. We will have that and much more to get your Thursday morning started. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Renee Chu. And you join just at the right time because we have all this beautiful sunshine yes. now and some blue sky out there. Two days was a long time to go without sunshine, oh, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center with our warm afternoon. And when we'll see rain again. Yeah, nice to see that sunshine breaking through. There's still some cloud cover along and east of I-95 and a little sprinkle that continues to fall there. But we'll continue to see the skies clearing as we get through the next few hours. Expect partly cloudy skies this afternoon. There could still be uh, a couple of times where we cloud up uh, on and off, but for the most part, we should see a good bit of sunshine through the afternoon, allowing our temperatures to climb up to around 70 degrees. Early this morning, around 430, the Storm Prediction Center put us under a level one and two risk for severe storms. So it is a WRL weather alert day. We could see straight line damaging winds. And then in our level two area, we could see a few isolated tornadoes. That would be Clinton, Fayetteville, uh, Rayford, Southern Pines, uh, and again, just isolated potential for a tornado. Tornadoes. This is a newer run of the computer model, which starts to show some of the p potential showers as early as, t uh, as tomorrow evening. And then we'll see the rain picking up in intensity and in coverage as we get into Saturday morning. There's 7 a.m. And you can see the heavy rain there in yellow and orange. By the afternoon, we start to see a broken line developing. That's when we'll likely have that chance for scattered storms moving through. And we're going to talk about how much we could see coming up in just a bit. Look at this beautiful sunshine. Here's a look at Franklinton with sunshine and damp roads still, but that sunshine should dry out our streets pretty quickly this morning. 57 is our current temperature right now and hour by hour we'll see a high of around 70 degrees. Again, looking at a lot of rain on Saturday, even minus the severe storms. I'll show you how much rain we could see coming up, Brian. Elizabeth, here at 802, I'm still tracking some delays on I-40 through Garner. We had an earlier truck fire out on the eastbound side of I-40 between Jones Sausage Road and the Business 70 interchange. You can still see some of those lingering delays there. The past few minutes, it looks like things may be getting a little better on the eastbound side of I-40. Leaving the 440 split in southeast Raleigh, heading down toward business 70 and 42 through uh, the Garner area. We're now measuring about a four minute delay. You're going to run into those slowdowns right around the Jones Sausage Road area. If you can pick up 40 eastbound from business 70, you'll be on the other side of that fire and those backups. And it looks like a little bit of an on or onlooker delay on the westbound side. We're now measuring a 15 minute delay, although the sensor readings don't look quite that bad at this point. Uh, we'll see if we can get some new information here in the next few minutes and give you a better idea of how bad those delays are on the westbound side coming in through Garner. Over on the east side of Durham, I'm watching a crash on 70 eastbound right around Marley Drive. It's between the 885 interchange heading down toward the Miami Boulevard intersection. You can see those delays. They're pretty significant backups. It looks like if you can pick it up from Marley Drive, you'll be on the other side of those slowdowns. And in Wake Forest, they are clearing an earlier crash from Stadium Drive near Rock Spring Road right there in front of the high school near downtown. Brian, thanks. Breaking news. Five people are in police custody after leading officers on a chase this morning. Our breaking news tracker was at Joyner Park in Wake Forest, where the crash ended around 3.30 this morning. Police initially responded to a shots fired call over on North Allen Street. When they got there, a group of people in a car drove off, starting the chase. Police chased them for two miles to the park where five people were arrested. No one was injured by the gunfire. More breaking news. A driver is in the hospital and will be facing charges after leading law enforcement on a chase in Moore County that ended in a crash. That crash happened on Boys Camp Road near Cameron at about 1245 this morning. The sheriff's office says the driver took off when deputies tried to pull him over and a chase started. The crash happened a short time later and the car overturned. The driver was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. And new this morning, we've learned that a 17-year-old from Pembroke has been killed. The Robinson County Sheriff's Office says they responded to Downey Road. There, they found Sweat High School student Caden Strickland shot. This is being investigated as a homicide, but there is no word yet on a suspect. We will keep you updated as we learn more information. 
Today, Durham City Council will consider a new way to make sure all 911 calls are answered. Right now, Durham has an informal emergency backup relationship with the Raleigh Wake Emergency Communications Center. Calls that went unanswered to Durham Emergency Communications would go to Wake County. Durham now wants to switch to a formal partnership with Fayetteville. City Council agenda cites shared infrastructure, technological similarities, and a similar size and capacity as reasons for the switch. Durham Council members will discuss the potential change at today's work session. One of the UNC football players charged in connection with a crash that killed a fellow student is due in court today. Zachary Rice is accused of closely following another car at more than 120 miles per hour right before that crash on January 21st in Chapel Hill. A passenger in the lead car, 20-year-old Molly Rotunda, died in that crash. Rice is facing charges including driving after consuming while younger than 21. He is one of 10 people, including at least six UNC students who are facing charges. That includes two employees at Still Life Bar who are charged with serving to minors. Tonight, President Joe Biden will deliver his State of the Union address at the U.S. Capitol, where you're looking live. White House aides say this year's address aims to lay out an agenda that the president can quickly take out onto the campaign trail. Some of those topics include protecting the Affordable Care Act and expanding efforts to relieve student debt and the cost of housing. President Biden is also expected to call on both Democrats and Republicans to take action on issues where they can find common ground, such as tackling the fentanyl crisis and increasing assistance for veterans. Some North Carolina guests will be at the Capitol building for tonight's State of the Union. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live from downtown Raleigh. And Kelsey, our senators and a congressman have invited some people to join them. Michelle, yes, North Carolina will be on the national stage tonight in the State of the Union address. The family of this Chapel Hill man, Keith Siegel, will be there tonight. Keith and his wife, Aviva, were taken by Hamas during the October 7th attack. Aviva was released, but Keith is still being held hostage. Keith's sister and niece are representing the family tonight. They'll be Senators Ted Budd and Tom Tillis's guests. Both senators say they're working to bring Keith home safely. And Representative Don Davis from North Carolina will also be bringing this special guest tonight. That's 109-year-old Cassie Smith. You heard that right, 109 years old. Davis says she voted on the first day of early voting and is a living symbol of our democracy. Miss Smith lives in Battleboro. You can watch the State of the Union address right here tonight on WRAL and Fox 50 at 9 o'clock. Kelsey Coffey, WRAL News, live in Raleigh. The man accused of shooting his ex-girlfriend in Smithfield last month has been arrested in Delaware. Benjamin Blakely was taken into custody in Wilmington, Delaware yesterday. He is now in custody awaiting extradition back to North Carolina. Blakely was wanted after his ex-girlfriend was found shot on February 29th. Her neighbor found her outside of her home and called 911. Blakely is charged with assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill. Citizen tips helped law enforcement make their arrest. A review hearing is scheduled today for the teenager accused in Raleigh's Headingham mass shooting. Judge Paul Ridgway will check in with the legal representation for the suspect, Austin Thompson, as well as the state's legal party to determine a timeline for the case moving forward. In January, new evidence, including police body camera video from Thompson's capture, was released. District Attorney Lauren Freeman tells WRL this case has a massive amount of evidence to work through. There will also be a review hearing for one of the men accused in the murder of Wake County Deputy Ned Byrd today. Legal representation for Arturo Sotelo will appear before a judge this morning. Prosecutors are not seeking the death penalty against the brothers Arturo and Alder accused in that shooting. Deputy Byrd was found dead investigating a suspicious truck in August of 2022. Today, the group that runs PNC Arena in Raleigh will share another update on plans to upgrade the arena. The Centennial Authority Board meets this morning at 10. The main goal of today's meeting is to approve a new design firm for the project. Last week, the board interviewed three firms and chose Gensler and local partner LS3P. This comes after the board cut ties with its previous architect in January. This is all part of a $300 million project for the arena and the surrounding area. 
The ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is now underway, and two teams from the Triangle will hit the court today. UNC will take on Miami at 1.30 this afternoon at the Greensboro Coliseum. And after that, at 5, Duke will be playing Georgia Tech. NC State will play the winner of that game in the quarterfinals tomorrow. TSA is launching new self-screening lanes. How pre-check flyers can handle their own airport security coming up. Plus, savvy investors and music lovers alike could profit from a new service. How you can buy shares in your favorite songs just ahead. And skies are starting to clear after last night's rain. We'll see a nice afternoon at 70 degrees. But Saturday is now a WREL weather alert day. We have a level one and two risk for severe storms. I'll show you the outline coming up. Welcome back. You are looking live at Wilson at the Whirly Gigs this morning. It's going to be a beautiful day today. You're watching WRL News, available on YouTube TV and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. Beautiful day today, lots of sunshine, but I think all eyes are on Saturday uh, where that level one and two risk. We have the WRL weather alert day, Elizabeth. We do. We were watching this, you know, for the last several days, looking at the potential for some heavy rain. And the models are diverging a little bit. We do have the Storm Prediction Center, though, putting us under a level one and two risk for severe storms. Heavy rain is likely. And then we could have some places where we have strong gusty winds or isolated tornadoes. And that would be more likely in our southern counties where the level two risk is. That includes Clinton, Fayetteville, Rayford, Southern Pines, Pinehurst. That's where we could also see an isolated tornado. The rest of the viewing area under that level one risk has just an isolated chance of some wind damage. We take a look at uh, satellite and radar. Of course, our system that uh, brought us yesterday's rain is zipping out of here quickly. This is Saturday's system. And we'll see a break in between the two. Already seeing a good bit of thunder and lightning uh, just ahead of the warm front with this system. So we'll be watching that closely. This is a look at our computer model run for Friday into Saturday. And you can see that warm front lifting northward. As long as that warm front crosses our area, it is going to put us in what we call the warm or unstable sector, which would bring us a chance of some scattered storms. Now, if that low ends up tracking farther south, uh, then we may end up not seeing that severe threat. But we'll, you know, we'll pretty much guess that it's likely to come through here. Cold front comes through and then we begin to see some clearing with a quiet day on Sunday. Here's a look at a closer view. This is a look at the high resolution model. By the time we get to uh, Friday evening, Friday night, we're seeing light patchy rain, but it turns heavy in the morning. There's 6 a.m. You can see the yellow and orange color contours. Then we start to see a kind of a broken line developing that will happen around lunchtime or so, stretching from South Hill to Roxborough to Durham. And as it swings southward and eastward, it's uh, potentially going to bring some uh, potential for some scattered storms that could produce some wind damage. Starting to clear things out in parts of the viewing area right now. Apex looking blue, Chapel Hill looking blue, of course, isn't it always? Um, uh, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant. Uh, Goldsboro just beginning to clear. Fayetteville, same story, seeing a little bit of sunshine peeking through. The streets are still damp in some places from last night's rain, and there's still a little bit of rain showing up in Wilson County and uh, 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 Edgecombe County as all of this moves on out. But that moves out and we'll see partly cloudy skies through the rest of the morning and into the afternoon. And that should make for a nice uh, day today with high 70. 100% chance of rain on Saturday, but we're dry Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's going to be our next best chance of rain. It does look like a, a pretty potent system for us. Rainfall wise, we'll likely see as much as an inch to an inch and a half of rain. Keep checking back. Um, again, it looks like it's going to be a soaker of a day Saturday, especially through the middle of the afternoon. So it is a WRL weather alert day. It is also the day that we lose an hour of sleep as we spring forward. You'll see extra daylight in the evening and then sunshine in our forecast through the middle of next week with a nice warm up. Brian? Just about 817 right now. I want to update you about this crash we've been following in Durham on 70 eastbound right around Marley Drive, which is not too far from the Miami Boulevard intersection. Traffic heading away from 885 back toward Miami Boulevard on 70 eastbound. Seeing some pretty big delays as they work to clear that crash. If you're able to pick it up from Marley Drive, maybe using Andrew Avenue to Marley Drive and then heading back to uh, 70 eastbound, you should be able to get on the other side of those delays. Also watching some backups forming in both directions of 885 this morning in Durham. I'm not seeing any particular cause for that. It looks like it's just congestion adding five to six minutes on either side between I-40 and 147. Looking a lot better in Garner. We had that truck fire out there on 40 eastbound just beyond the Jones Sausage Road uh, interchange there. Way in 
the distance, you might be able to see some flashing lights there on the side of the road. Uh, if you are heading eastbound out of Raleigh through Gardner, you're not going to see big delays right now, only a three minute backup. But with that activity over on the right shoulder with fire trucks and other flashing lights, you do need to move over at least one lane to give them some room to work. Watching a few other minor crashes right now, not really seeing any cause for concerns out there with any big delays related to those crashes. But we are seeing some backups coming in from Wake Forest this morning. About a 10 minute delay on southbound Capitol Boulevard from 98 to 540. Brian, thanks. New York Governor Kathy Hochul has deployed the National Guard and state police to conduct mandatory bag checks in New York City subway. This move is an effort to crack down on subway crime. In total, 750 National Guardsmen and 250 state and NTA cops will help the New York police patrol the city's busiest transit stations and check people's bags. This comes after Mayor Eric Adams announcement about enhanced bag checks at certain subway stations starting this week. According to City Hall, police will be deploying 94 bag screening teams to 136 subway stations each week. Today is the official start of the spring break travel season and the TSA is preparing for it to be the busiest year on record. The agency considers March 7th through the 25th to be the spring break travel period. Last year, the agency screened a record number of passengers and this year it's trending even busier, seeing roughly 6% spike in travelers. Despite the increase, TSA says it aims to get people through their security checkpoints and on their way in less than 30 minutes. With airlines predicting record-breaking spring break travel, TSA is testing what could be the security checkpoint of the future. The new machines are designed to dramatically reduce wait times in security. Shang Langil gives us insight to where the new machines are located, how they work, and more. Let's face it, no one enjoys waiting long lines to make it through airport security. But hope for a smoother travel experience could be on the horizon, with the Transportation Security Administration revealing its new self-screening checkpoint lanes. Uh, passengers are looking for something that they can complete the screening process on their own with minimal interaction with TSOs. Currently, the systems are only available at Las Vegas's Harry Reid International Airport for TSA PreCheck customers who speak English. Officials are testing their effectiveness before potentially rolling them out at other airports nationwide. We have an opportunity uh, for the public to come through and to provide critical feedback on how the system performs, what it does well, what are some of the frustrations. And while they look high tech, the experience is designed to be pretty self-explanatory. We don't want it to be intimidating, and um, the goal is to have each step be intuitive. So when they bring their uh, bags into the carry-on bin, um, there's an opportunity for them to talk to a, a real officer if they need to. If, if they don't, that's fine. Um, and, then, um, and then they move through the passenger screening system with those entry-exit doors. When it comes to cleanliness, the machines automatically sanitize bins with ultraviolet light after every use. But for passengers concerned about privacy... The cameras don't capture any biometrics, they don't capture any audio or video. And as travel numbers continue rebounding since the COVID-19 pandemic, the self-screening lanes are expected to not only speed up security checks, but require fewer TSA officers to monitor them. We're also looking at how can we reallocate officers to the busier aspects of the checkpoint. Maybe one day they'll be at RDU. That was Sean Langeel reporting. A new company is trying to revolutionize the music industry by allowing fans to profit from their favorite artists' music. Jukebox is allowing fans to invest in royalty streams from top artists like Beyonce and Taylor Swift. The company was approved from the Securities and Exchange Commission last week and is now live. The unique opportunity includes tracks like Beyonce's hit Halo and Swift's Welcome to New York. Trading is not yet allowed, but the company plans to add the features in the future. Students will no longer need a number two pencil when they take the SAT. Starting on Saturday, the exam is going digital. Students will still have to go to a testing site to take the test. It will also be about an hour shorter than the paper version. Results will be returned in a few days instead of the weeks that it's taken in the past to get scores. Tonight is the big night in for the arts, which supports and celebrates the arts communities. And for what for one of this year's feature artists, Gabriel and Getz, community is at the cent at the core of how he treats his stunning murals. I've always searched for community in wherever I am. And you know, community is all about identity. So finding those different communities that you can kind of tap into and connect to, um, that's really special to me. 
So beautiful. Tonight, join us to celebrate and support our local arts community when WREL presents Big Night In for the Arts, featuring amazing artists including Piers Freelon and Tift Merritt, a live performance by award-winning bluegrass musician Trey Wellington and more help us raise funds to create healthy, vibrant communities through the arts. Watch and donate tonight at 7 on WREL. And just ahead for us at 8, Durham 911 is looking to remedy their issue, missing calls. Why the city thinks teaming up with Fayetteville's 911 center is the solution. And a UNC football player is expected in court today. Coming up, we'll break down the charges connected to a car crash that killed a fellow UNC student. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. Beautiful day today. Some rough weather moving in this weekend, though. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner tracking it all for us. Yes, uh, the low pressure system that brought us yesterday's rain is moving on out. A couple of little sprinkles left and our far eastern counties of that is moving out of here quickly. And the sun is building from the uh, west. Take a look at this and Sanford looking at uh, beautiful skies here. Expect partly cloudy conditions through the afternoon for most of us. Walking the dog this morning. Temperatures are in the mid 50s, but we'll climb to around 70 this afternoon. And this evening, it should be very pleasant with temperatures in the mid 60s. Uh, Saturday is a WRL weather alert day and coming up on Fox 50. I'll show you who's under a level one and two risk for severe weather. Brian. It's 827, Elizabeth. Let's take a look at traffic this morning. Overall, we're in pretty good shape. We do have a report of a disabled vehicle that appears to be at the top of the ramp from 440 westbound onto Six Forks Road. You can see a little bit of a delayed building there. As we take a look at the overall trip on 440 this morning, westbound from 87 around to Wade Avenue, we just have some slowdowns along the way, adding up to about a 10-minute delay overall. In Durham, look out for a crash on eastbound US 70 at Marley Drive. That is between the 885 interchange down toward Miami Boulevard still seeing some delays on those eastbound lanes of 70. Thanks, Brian. Some North Carolina guests will be at the Capitol building for tonight's State of the Union. The family of Keith Siegel, a Chapel Hill man taken by Hamas, will be the guest of Senators Ted Budd and Tom Tillis. And 109-year-old Cassie Smith is attending as Representative Don Davis's guest. The State of the Union airs tonight at 9. Five people are in police custody after leading officers on a chase in Wake Forest. Early this morning, officers responded to a shots fired call near North Allen Road. A car led them on a chase that ended at Joyner Park on Harris Road. No one was shot. Next on Fox 50, how Taylor Swift fans joined together to pay for another fan's wedding. Shot in 4K ultra high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. Watching Saturday is a WRL weather alert day. Parts of our viewing area in a level one and two risk. I'll walk you through the timeline. And Durham is working to make sure your 911 calls are answered faster. The new partnership proposal that could have emergency calls answered in another city. And we are hours away from President Biden's State of the Union address. We'll introduce you to the North Carolina guests invited by state congressional leaders. Thanks for staying with us. 8.30 right now on your Thursday morning. A beautiful day ahead. I'm Michelle McConkey. And I'm Renee Chu. And it's shaping up to be a beautiful morning. Mm. Love seeing peaks of sunshine out there. Elizabeth Garner in the WRL Severe Weather Center. A lot less green on that radar. Absolutely. We started with some of that this morning, but that is clearing rapidly. Just exiting our eastern counties right now. Of course, we have sunshine that's uh, developing from the west. Skies are clearing in places. We'll see partly cloudy skies through the afternoon. And temperatures will climb nicely into the upper 60s and low 70s. Here's a look at Saturday, though. We've been watching this and uh, looking at the potential for some heavy rain uh, and right now it looks like we have the possibility of some severe weather level one risk for most of our counties but it's level two and our southwestern counties it's going to include Fayetteville and Clinton as well as Rayford and Southern Pines this is where we'd have a better chance of some isolated tornadoes and some isolated wind damage in the level one risk area it's possible that we could start to see some of those showers moving in uh, on Friday evening and then the rain really picks up in intensity Saturday morning it's pretty heavy there at around 7 a.m the uh, yellow shaded areas 
is where we'll likely have some of that heavy rain. And then the back edge of this is where the cold front comes through. This is where we'd have the best chance of seeing some severe storms. So we'll continue to track that for you over the next couple of days and let you know of any changes that are coming. Franklinton looking nice and bright this morning. Uh, streets are drying out nicely. 57 as our current temperature and our temperatures will warm quickly with all this sunshine. Mid 60s at lunchtime. We'll see a high of 70 this afternoon. Brian. All right, Elizabeth, as we take a look at traffic this morning, we are seeing some delays on 440 westbound coming in from 87 back around toward Capitol Boulevard. There is also a report of a disabled ve vehicle on the ramp from 440 westbound onto Six Forks Road. That's contributing at least to some delays, but most of this appears to be congestion. All told from 87 around to Wade Avenue, you're looking at about a 10 minute delay on 440 westbound. Also looking at about eight minutes of backups on that southbound trip on Capitol Boulevard from Wake Forest to 540. Just getting reports of a crash in Raleigh on Western Boulevard right around Hunt Drive, not too far from Central Prison and the Dix Park uh, entrance there and a minor crash reported this morning on Glenwood Avenue right around Oberlin Road. Still tracking a crash in Durham on 7 near Marley Drive. Some backups there showing up as you head uh, eastbound on 70 from 885 down toward that Miami Boulevard interchange. And we're seeing some delays this morning on both sides of 885 in Durham between I-40 and the 147 split. Sensors right now showing between a three and five minute slowdown on either side. That's all just congestion. All right, thank you, Brian. Following some breaking news, five people are in police custody after leading them on a chase this morning. Our breaking news tracker was the Carroll Joyner Park in Wake Forest, where that crash ended around 3.30 this morning. Police initially responded to a shots fired call on North Allen Street. When they arrived on scene, a group of people in a car drove off starting that chase. Police chased them for two miles to the park where five people were arrested. No one was injured in that shooting. Breaking news, a driver's in the hospital and will be facing charges after leading law enforcement on a chase in Moore County that ended in a crash. It happened on Boys Camp Road near Cameron around 1245 this morning. The sheriff's office says the driver took off when deputies tried to pull them over and a chase started. The crash happened a short time later and you can see the car overturned. The driver was taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. Today, the Durham City Council will consider a new way to make sure all 911 calls are answered. Right now, Durham has an informal emergency backup relationship with the Raleigh Wake Emergency Communication Center. Calls that went unanswered to Durham Emergency Communications would go to Wake County. Durham now wants to switch to a formal partnership with Fayetteville. The City Council agenda cites shared infrastructure, technological similarities, and a similar size and capacity as reasons for the switch. Council members will discuss the potential change at today's work session. One of the UNC football players charged in connection with a crash that killed a fellow student is due in court today. Zachary Rice is accused of closely following another car at more than 120 miles per hour right before the crash on January 21st in Chapel Hill. A passenger in the lead car, 20-year-old Molly Rotunda, died in that crash. Rice is facing charges, including driving after consuming while younger than 21. He's one of 10 people, including at least six UNC students who are facing charges. That includes two employees at Still Life Bar who are charged with serving alcohol to minors. Happening now in the WRLI Center, we're following some breaking news out of Rocky Mount. Uh, the uh, firefighters are working a fire at Rocky Mount Recyclers. This picture just came into our newsroom, uh, courtesy of a viewer who was nearby and saw what was going on. Uh, we're working to find out exactly how this fire started, how big the fire is, and whether or not it's is affecting any nearby homes or businesses. This is on Halifax Road right there in Rocky Mount. Our Heidi Kirk is on the scene gathering any information. As soon as we get any new information about this developing story, we'll keep you updated here at the WRA Live Center. All right, thank you, Ken. Tonight, President Joe Biden will deliver his State of the Union address at the U.S. Capitol, where you're looking live this morning. According to White House aides, this year's address aims to lay out an agenda that he can quickly take out on the campaign trail. Some of those topics include protecting the Affordable Care Act and expanding efforts to relieve student debt and the cost of housing. Some guests from here in North Carolina will be in attendance for President Biden's address tonight. WRL's Kelsey Coffey tells us more about the special guests invited by congressional leaders. 
North Carolina will be on the national stage tonight for the State of the Union address. The family of this Chapel Hill man, Keith Siegel, will be there tonight. Keith and his wife, Aviva, were taken by Hamas during the October 7th attack. Aviva was released, but Keith is still being held hostage. Keith's sister and niece are representing the family tonight. They'll be Senators Ted Budd and Tom Tillis's guests. Both senators say they're working to bring Keith home safely. And Representative Don Davis from North Carolina will also be bringing this special guest tonight. That's 109-year-old Cassie Smith. You heard that right, 109 years old. Davis says she voted on the first day of early voting and is a living symbol of our democracy. Miss Smith lives in Battleboro. You can watch the State of the Union address right here on WRAL and Fox 50 tonight at 9. Kelsey Coffey, WRAL News in Raleigh. A review hearing is scheduled today for the teenager accused in Raleigh's Headingham mass shooting. Judge Paul Ridgway will check in with the legal representation for the suspect, Austin Thompson, as well as the state's legal party to determine a timeline for the case moving forward. In January, new evidence, including police body camera video from Thompson's capture, was released. District Attorney Lauren Freeman tells WREL this case has a massive amount of evidence to work through. There will also be a review hearing for one of the men accused in the murder of Wake County Deputy Ned Byrd today. Legal representation for Arturo Marin Sotelo will appear before a judge this morning. Prosecutors are not seeking the death penalty against the two brothers, Arturo and Alder, accused in the shooting. Deputy Byrd was found dead investigating a suspicious truck in August 2022. Some clinics in Alabama are expected to lift a hold on certain in vitro fertilization services immediately after last month's unprecedented state Supreme Court ruling. State lawmakers passed a bill Wednesday aimed at protecting IVF patients and providers from legal liability, and the governor signed it into law last night. The new bill does not address the state Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos are human beings and those who destroy them can be held liable for wrongful death. ESPN's College Game Day is just two days away, and this week it's happening in Durham. The Game Day team will be at Cameron Indoor Stadium Saturday for part two of Battle of the Blues. Duke is looking for revenge on its home court after UNC beat the Blue Devils at the Dean Smith Center last month. Doors for Game Day open at Cameron Indoor at 9.30 Saturday morning. The show starts at 10. Admission is free. In just four days, mobile phones in North Carolina will turn into mini sports betting windows. But before you bet, understand there is a science to how it all works. They're remarkable at setting lines. Tonight at 6, WRL investigates how sports betting works before you get into the game. When's the best time to play? Which sports give you the best chance of winning? And why, in the end, the house always wins? The science of sports betting tonight at 6. A new research shows there are cancer-causing chemicals in very popular skincare products. Coming up, why researchers are calling for the cleansers to be recalled. And the Swifties are showing their collective power once again. Just ahead, why Taylor Swift fans are coming together to pay for a fellow fan's wedding. And you're looking live over Warrington this morning. The sun came out this morning, but more rain is on the way for the weekend. After the break, meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner gives us a timeline of when we'll see it. It is 8.43 and what a beautiful Thursday morning it is in Wake Forest with all that blue sky and seeing that sunshine now. The rain is moving on out of here, but we will have more rain this weekend. Elizabeth Gardner is tracking why Saturday is now a WRL weather alert day. We've been watching Saturday for the last several days, looking at the potential for some heavy rain and some possible thunderstorms. The computer models, at least some of them, are evolving this uh, in a way where we could have a better chance for severe storms. So early this morning, the Storm Prediction Center put us under a level one and two risk for severe storms across our area. We'll likely see rain all day and then some afternoon severe storms, which uh, could mean some damaging wind or isolated tornadoes. So Saturday is a WRL weather alert day. The best chance of isolated tornadoes will be in our southern counties, and that would include Clinton and Fayetteville, Rayford, Southern Pines, the rest of the viewing area in a level one. Level one just means that we have a small chance for some wind damage. A level two means that we could see a better chance of maybe some isolated tornadoes. Here's a look at the rest of the day today looking at, or I should say Friday. The rest of the day today is looking great. Uh, Friday late evening, we may see some scattered showers that develop, and then the rain really 
really picks up in intensity by Saturday morning. So it's heavy at times at 6 a.m. and at 8 a.m. Those uh, yellow and, sh and orange shaded areas are an indication of some heavy rain. And then we almost see a broken line developing here. That's most likely when the cold front will come through right around lunchtime. And we could see some of these cells producing some strong wind that could cause some damage. So we'll continue to track that. The models are not in complete agreement. So keep checking back with us as we may have some changes to share with you. Uh, Pinehurst looking beautiful right now. I imagine there are going to be a lot of people out there on that golf course. It's a little wet, but it looks like they're out there anyway. Um, and just partly cloudy through the afternoon and some drying conditions. 57 is our temperature across the triangle area right now. And uh, we take a look at uh, what we'll end up seeing for the rest of the day today. And that is uh, partly cloudy skies. We don't have to worry anymore about uh, any more showers today. It's all eyes on Saturday. 54 in Roxboro now, 56 in Rocky Mountain, and 59 right now in Fayetteville. Around town, 70 this afternoon in Raleigh, 69 in Durham, and 72 in Fayetteville. For a nice mild week in our forecast. Uh, normal high is 60. So, you know, in the month of March, we really start to see our temperatures overall warming up. And today will be beautiful with a high of 70. Tomorrow, a bit more cloud cover and 65. Of course, Saturday looks wet. And then behind that system, Sunday is bright but cooler with a high of around 60. But still, that's not bad. Don't forget Saturday. Not only is it a WRL weather alert day, it is also the day we go back to daylight time overnight. Don't forget to set your clocks ahead. We lose that hour of sleep, but we gain a little bit of daylight in the evening. Um, early next week looks nice. We'll see increasing temperatures with a high of 73 by Wednesday. <laughs> And we continue to follow the breaking news out of Rocky Mountain. We're getting even more pictures of that Rocky Mountain where cyclers that's been on fire for several hours now. That's the new uh, information we're gathering from our Heidi Kirk, who's on the scene there right now. These are pictures into our newsroom. Again, this is the Rocky Mountain Recyclers uh, plant. Apparently, uh, it's a plant that crush, crushes cars uh, on a regular basis. This uh, fire has been going on now for several hours, and these are, of course, new pictures into our newsroom. Uh, we're working to find out how big this fire is. We hear that it's, it's rather big fire. Also, uh, we're trying to determine if it's threatening any nearby businesses or homes. Again, our Heidi Kirk is right there on the scene gathering any new information. As soon as we get any new de developments, we'll bring them to you here in the W Area Live Center. Today, the Durham Public School Board will be looking at their budget priorities for the next school year. This comes after months of controversy over employee pay. Board meeting materials show school leaders plan to talk about increasing classified salaries with 2024-25 schedules. Last month, the board approved 11% raises for the rest of the school year. That still leaves many employees making less than what they were getting at the start of the school year before budgeting issues came to light. Interim Superintendent Caddy Moore is expected to present the budget proposal on April 11th. Today, Wake Med and the city of Raleigh are working to train more people to help kids and teens struggling with their mental health. The pilot program launches today with an event at the Marsh Creek Community Center. City Council member Christina Jones led the push to get funding for two training sessions with 100 people per class. They will be trained in how to help people manage difficult situations and avoid falling into negative patterns. A new study finds microplastics are linked to an increased chance for heart attack, stroke, even death. The study found people with micro or nanoplastics in their carotid artery tissues were twice as likely to die from any of those causes over the next three years. That was compared to people who did not have tiny plastic particles in their systems. Researchers say this is the first study that associated plastic contamination with human diseases. Researchers are raising concerns over a dangerous chemical in some popular skin care products. Independent laboratory Valashore says it found high levels of benzene, a cancer-causing chemical, in several acne products. Even in popular brands like Clearasil and Proactive, the lab is starting a petition for the FDA to recall these products. They say the chemical came from contaminated ingredients and some had hundreds of times above the FDA's benzene limit. Today in entertainment news, a new way to experience last year's biggest movie and the next movie for a current Oscar nominee. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute.
Get ready for Barbie the Movie in Concert. Macy Schmidt and the Barbie Land Sinfonietta, an all-female majority women of color orchestra, will perform the film's award-winning music as the movie is shown on a giant screen. The tour launches July 2nd in Tampa, Florida, with shows planned in 37 North American cities. More info at BarbieTheMovieInConcert.com. The world expects mothers like you and I to walk in with our heads held down, Nah, what you gotta walk in like a king. Everything is yours. I'm divine now. This is mafia. Here's your first look at Sing Sing, based on the true story of prisoners who found purpose and meaning in a prison theater group. The drama features Oscar nominees Coleman Domingo and Paul Racy and an ensemble of formerly incarcerated actors. Sing Sing opens in theaters this July. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. More music may be removed from TikTok in the coming months. The National Music Publishers Association warned some of its members that it does not plan to renew its TikTok license after April 30th. The MPMA is the trade association that works on behalf of music publishers' interests, having taken YouTube, LimeWire, and some file sharing services to court. Universal Music Group has already started pulling its music from TikTok over royalty payments. New Kids on the Block is back together for their first studio album in 11 years. It's called Still Kids, and it's set to drop on May 17th. The band kicks off its Magic Summer 2024 tour in June with special guests Paula Abdul and DJ Jazzy Jeff. They'll be performing at Coastal Credit Union Music Park on July 28th. Taylor Swift fans rallying together to help pay for a bride-to-be's wedding. Emily Harris was gifted a signed Taylor Swift guitar for her 16th birthday. And when it came to pay for her wedding, she had to sell the guitar to make those ends meet. But Swifties urged Harris not to sell it. Instead, they started an online fundraiser to chip in funds for the wedding. People were commenting, like hundreds of people, you know, never sell that guitar an amazing reminder of, you know, people being just true, genuine, kind. Yeah, Harris says that the guitar has become such a big part of her wedding story that it will be front and center on her big day. Cole plays lead singer Chris Martin and Madam Web star Dakota Johnson are reportedly planning to tie the knot. British tabloid The Mirror reports Martin and Johnson got engaged a while ago, but they've been keeping it quiet. It also reports that Martin's ex-wife, Gwyneth Paltrow, has given them her blessing. In a recent interview, Johnson says she wants to start a family soon. Lindsay Lohan and Aisha Curry are revealing more about how Aisha and her husband, NBA star Steph Curry, became godparents to Lohan's son. In an interview promoting their movie, Irish Wish, Lohan and Curry said they formed a special bond over Lohan's desire to become a mom. Curry is pregnant with her fourth child, but she and Steph have not decided about godparents yet. The countdown to the biggest night in Hollywood is on. The red carpet for the 96th Academy Awards was rolled out at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood yesterday. It kicks off the final stretch of Oscar pre-parties and events as stars gear up for the awards on Sunday. Portions of the 65th Governor's Ball, the official post-Oscar celebrations, were also unveiled during the event. Nominees, winners, and guests will be able to enjoy a menu of 120 dishes curated by Chef Wolfgang Puck, including a gold-dusted chocolate Oscar. And Shake Shack joining the Oscar celebration by offering free sandwiches based on how long the show lasts. If the Oscars last longer than three hours and 31 minutes, customers will get a free chicken shack. And if the show runs shorter than the three hours and 31 minutes, they'll get a free smoke shack. There's a catch, though. You have to have a minimum $10 order. The deal kicks off March 11th and runs through March 18th. Cereal lovers rejoice. This is your special day. It's National Cereal Day. The popular breakfast staple is beloved by millions, so make sure you celebrate with your favorite cereal. And if you're not a cereal lover, get your griddles out and batter ready. It's also National Flapjack Day. You can enjoy the hearty breakfast, not just this morning, but all day long. We'll be right back.